before we start talking about all of the different systems of the body, we need to talk about cell communication. And this is why. Cells need to be able to communicate with one another to actually coordinate. Okay, so for coordination of all those different body systems. So we've I've already had you think about how some of the different body systems are connected to one another, and cell communication is what allows the not only different systems to communicate with one another, but also cells within the same system, within the same tissues, within the same organs, they need to communicate with each other too. Cells communicate in two broad ways. There's local, which we can see over here. Okay, so local communication involves um, either two cells that are in direct contact with each other or releasing chemicals that just cross a very short distance um, between those two cells, and then long distance communication, okay, those are hormones. So that's when some signal is traveling through a long network to get to the cells where it needs to go. So we'll talk about those in a little bit more detail. So first we have direct communication, and this is when cells are actually right next to one another. So it can be that there are little junctions, which we can see here and here, between the cell membranes that allows uh, molecules to pass directly from one cell to another. So we see that in a lot of tissues because they're made up of very similar cells. Um, can also be cell-cell recognition down here where you have receptor molecules. And so one cell has a receptor molecule, another cell has a kind of switch that fits into that receptor or like a lock and key, and that allows communication, a signal to pass from cell A to cell B. So that's direct communication. Neurons, so the cells that make up your nervous system, use local communication. Um, and that's really their job, to communicate and pass the signal from one cell to another. And what happens is we have the axon, or the end of one neuron, and then we have the dendrite, which is kind of the other end of another neuron. And there are these chemicals right here called neurotransmitters that get released from the axon and they pass through a very small space called the synapse and are accepted by the receptors on the dendrite. So that's local communication. Neurons are also able to communicate with other cells other than neurons, um, like your muscle cells, to cause a reaction in which case those neurotransmitters travel a very, very, very short distance okay, in that synapse to get to a target cell. So we'll talk more about that when we get to the nervous system next. Remember, other than local communication, we have long distance communication, and that's covered by hormones. Yay, hormones! You've been dealing with those your entire life, particularly in puberty. Um, but what hormones do, you know, they're not just active during puberty, they're active all of the time. They help your body to maintain homeostasis, and they travel through your circulatory system. So that's either the blood vessels or the lymphatic vessels. And what happens is you have endocrine cells. Endocrine cells, okay, that we can see right here, produce hormones, and then those hormones travel through those vessels. When they reach, and then they kind of get released along the way, this cell, nothing happens. Okay, hopefully you can see that yellow, because there's no receptor for the hormone. But when it reaches these cells over here, okay, notice we have this receptor right here, and that triggers a response to that hormone from the cell. So the receptors on cells are really important. That Because local communication, cells are communicating with cells just directly around them. But hormones kind of travel throughout your body, but they only elicit a response in the cells that have the receptors. So... That's cell communication in a nutshell.